Um, I'm, I'm going now to speak about my personal experience uh, with cosmetic lengthening. Okay. Uh, as uh, I, I have published this study uh, seven years ago, and I'm continuing to uh, operate my patient uh, who are in need for cosmetic lengthening. Uh, personally, I use uh, all the different techniques, either uh, external fixation, external with internal, or uh, a pure internal technique. I used all kinds of internal technique like uh, Albizia nail, like uh, uh, precise nail, like right, uh, 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 um, uh, fed bone, like uh, uh, the pro version of precise nail also with uh, manual magnet that I used with uh, the inventor was uh, uh, the in engineer from France, Mr. Zoperian. Uh, he came to Egypt and uh, we operated uh, the cases together and I have already some videos online about this. So uh, if we're going to speak scientifically about uh, cosmetic lengthening, um, as you know, that uh, everyone in this world at the moment like to improve his image to others. So we can see advertising everywhere about uh, uh, wearing, uh, wearing shoes uh, to, 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 to raise the height like this, about seven, eight centimeters, just to be to uh, have better appearance to others. And uh, you know, this is the uh, age or era of cosmetic uh, uh, surgery. This is uh, <laughs> just uh, the Mona Lisa before and uh, after uh, being in uh, USA. <laughs> so, So, uh, advances in technology and equipment and increasing surgeon experience by time in doing lengthening, with these techniques extended the indication of lengthening beyond the uh, use for pathological cases like disproportionate or uh, unequal uh, lower limbs uh, to to do cosmetic lengthening and lengthening of uh, achondroplasia. Uh, the lower limit of normal stature for Caucasian men is 5.5 inch, which is uh, 166 centimeter, and for women is 153 centimeter. This is the lower limit. This is about the fifth percentile of the bell curve. The average, many men and women have a height less than 25 percentile and they are not satisfied. This is less than 172 centimeter in men and 160 centimeter in women. As we know that uh, the average height in men, the 50 percentile is 176 while it is 167 for women in many situations just adding uh, 6 to 10 centimeters to the height improves the psychological status of that person and improve his or her social capability to live better in community in, I have published an article in Orthopedics Journal in 2015 uh, about safe cosmetic lengthening for short stature people. I mean that uh, we as a doctor have to be very careful about doing cosmetic lengthening. We don't accept any patient. There are parameters that we have to consider before accepting the patient to do cosmetic lengthening. And when we do cosmetic lengthening, we should be very careful of uh, choosing the technique, following the observation till full cure. It is not a joke. It is uh, a procedure 
that may carry risk of complication or problem and we have to care about our patient when we be very close to our patient till from beginning till the end to have safe uh, cosmetic lengthening and safe surgery at the end. From July 2002 until June 2013, more than uh, 300 patients visited my clinic asking to increase their height. After an interview with a psychologist, as well as assessment by myself, only 155 patients were accepted to do the procedure. Uh, only one device uh, was used for these cases, which is Elizaro Ring Fixator. And one technique, it is our technique, which is maximum stability, is used in all patients we have operated in this study. This is uh, the ring fixator. You can see the screen now. You can see the uh, ring fixator with uh, connecting the tibia and the fibula distally, either by wire or by cannulated screw, and proximally connecting the tibia and the fibula by uh, uh, three uh, millimeter diameter wire connected just to one side to uh, the tibia, and not protruding from the other side of the fibula. This is more comfort for the patient, so the patient is able to walk and the weight bear without pain. Because I see that many patients uh, coming to me who did surgery uh, somewhere else, and they have a lot of pain, a lot of problem, a lot of complication, while my patient, they don't suffer from pain or uh, infection or loosening of pain or this kind of complication. Uh, a single level of lengthening at the junction between the metaphyseal and diaphyseal area of the proximal part of the tibia and just above the junction of the distal one-third and the proximal two-third of the fibula is used in all patients. In, uh, in this patient, one patient used double level uh, in lengthening the tibia, proximal and distal, just to uh, shorten the period of uh, the lengthening and the single level of the fibula. We limited the amount of lengthening to be no more than 25% of the original height of the bone segment we are lengthening. According uh, to uh, the recommendation of many basic science and animal studies, so this study there is no patient lengthened more than 10 centimeters at all, which is maximum 25% of uh, uh, the bone segment we are lengthening either the tibia or the femur. All patients were idiopathic short stature, as we don't consider lengthening in achondroplasia or any other pathological condition is a cosmetic reason. For achondroplasia, it is to improve the function of the patient rather than uh, uh, to be cosmetic or appearance. Uh, when we do uh, fibular osteotomy, we do it percutaneous through very small incision. So uh, the operation has no many scars as we used to see. And we used to do uh, to cut the bone under the uh, computer screen without need to do open surgery like this. So it is just very minimal invasive surgery. All frame used in this study were either FPDA approved material and or CE certified devices. So uh, also all beans we have used in all patients uh, I mean the beans by the beans connecting uh, the bone to the frame, to the external fixators. So all beans we used are 60 millimeter diameter, hydroxyapatite coated 
beans of Ortofix or Dial Mid uh, companies. Both companies are Italian companies. Uh, when we speak about the surgical technique, we use only three ring device connected by threaded rod in every patient. And we consider uh, anatomically the right corridor to insert the beans or wire not to have any possibility to do injury of nerve or uh, uh, vessels or, part or any uh, vital structures for the patient. The technique, uh, is, this technique is used in uh, 97 patients out of 155. In the remaining 58 patients, the fibula is fixed to the tibia distally by uh, six and a half millimeter diameter oblique position cannulated screw to uh, prevent uh, slippage uh, uh, of the distal fibula during lengthening. Uh, proximally, the fibula is fixed to the tibia, as we said, by three millimeter diameter wire. This oblique hooking wire is not a crossing one, but is connected to the frame from uh, the tibial side only. Uh, the patient, patient hospital stay ranged from three to five days. Follow up uh, clinically, evaluation of the bean side, here to any patient complain and examine all joint briefly, radiologically every two weeks. During this stage, all patients were allowed to walk using a walker or crutch with partial weight bearing about 50%. As a result of development of uh, plantar flexion contracture in 58 patients uh, who lengthened more than seven centimeters in average. So less than seven centimeters, we don't know, we don't need to do any tendo Achilles lengthening. But uh, when we do lengthening more than seven centimeters, uh, about 40, 50 percent of the patients need to do additional surgery of tendo Achilles lengthening. Um, actually, we don't do, uh, we don't cut the tendon itself when we do this surgery, but we do another technique to lengthen the muscle itself from the mid calf, which is more safer than uh, lengthening of the tendon itself. Uh, in many patients, just injection of Botox was enough to uh, regain back uh, or heal the problem of uh, equinus deformity. Uh, the timing for this uh, procedure of tendo Achilles lengthening after achieving the required length and giving a chance to physiotherapy to do its job in case uh, physio is not able to achieve 90, 90 degree dorsiflexion, then we can go ahead and do the procedure of tendo Achilles lengthening. Among our patients, uh, there were 111 male and 43 female. The median age was 26 years. The overall average preoperative height was 164 range it from 142 and a half to 179 centimeters. Uh, yes, there is, I have one patient who is uh, 179 centimeter who want to be taller and has psychological problem. Uh, he is from uh, North Europe where the average height is much higher than the Middle East area and 179 was considered, 179 was considered like medium uh, height in this area of North Europe. So uh, it was uh, 166 for male, the average, and uh, 100 uh, and for female, it was 152 uh, centimeters. This is the average 
height for patient need lengthening. Eight patients had minor degree of virus deformity. I mean, sometimes a patient has some bow leg and need to be corrected to be straight during uh, the procedure. It is possible to do that. Uh, four of these patients were associated with some degree of internal rotation uh, deformity. All these patients have East Asian origin. All associated deformity were assessed properly uh, and corrected simultaneously during the lengthening procedure. So we can correct the deformity and do the lengthening at the same time. Our aim was to lengthen always between 5 to 10 centimeters in all patients which see that uh, which we see that this is reasonable for the duration and the good result from our previous experience with pathological cases. However, few patients uh, lengthened less than 5 centimeters either due to their wish to finish earlier or due to development of complication as cystic regenerate or hypotrophic uh, uh, new bone formation. The new bone formation is not good enough to continue the lengthening. So they ended by uh, four or four and a half centimeter, which is also reasonable. Uh, to manage this problem, uh, accordion technique, compression, distraction is applied or bone graft was considered uh, either uh, synthetic or photographed. The radiological criteria for success of the procedure is to have at least three cortices in the newly formed bone in the anteroposterior and lateral view X-ray. Uh, the average height gained in centimeter was uh, six. 0.3 centimeter, ranged from 4.5 to 10 centimeter. The median height gained was 6.1 centimeter. The average post operative height was 168, ranged from 148 to 185 centimeter. The median post operative height was 170.2 centimeter. Uh, the minimum follow-up period for this study was two years. 147 patients were satisfied completely by the new height and mentioned that the operation affected positively their life. Ten patients were not satisfied by their new height, either because they wished to lengthen more, which is or was not possible, or if used from my side, or because they develop uh, a complication as bull regenerate or cystic regenerate that interfere with the final outcome. Uh, they finished their procedure safe, they were able to walk well, but they couldn't reach to the height they want to reach. That's just four, four centimeters or four and a half centimeters only, and they want more than that. So they were not satisfied. Um, only one patient among them was not satisfied due to a complication which he gradually developed bilateral virus deformity after frame removal. This is called plastic deformation and this need additional surgery to correct. Uh, there were no cast or brace was used at all in all patients after frame removal as I don't like to remove the frame before the regenerate show excellent consolidation. 11 patients insisted to come back to their work while the frame is on. Just within a month after uh, the operation, this patient practiced better psychological condition during treatment more than other preferred to wait until frame removal time. So actually when uh, the patient does the operation and the practice his life normally, always the psychological condition is better than do the operation just to wait for the result. You can see in this video, uh, the patient is running with the frame on Uh, 
So the surgery is not like the, some people think that they have to do the operation and stay in bed, but the patient can do the surgery and work and practice his life. It is not like, uh, uh, you know, some, I can see some patient do the surgery and they stay in bed. Not, not, of course, not with me, not, not with my technique, but uh, this happened. I can see patient even with one side lengthening, uh, they cannot, they are not able to walk well. This depends on many factors. We do uh, this technique, the maximum stability technique to allow our patient uh, to walk and to practice his life as normal as possible. This is another patient in my clinic. This is just one month after the operation. The patient can walk without any problem. Uh, this is a patient uh, from Denmark uh, who came to me 11 years ago. He's a football player. This is before the operation and this is his height after the operation, after 7 cm of lengthening. Uh, this is another patient from United States. This is uh, after lengthening 9 cm. This is before and this is after he is beside me. So you can see the comparison between between his shoulder level and my shoulder level here on the other side. This is another patient from Australia. Uh, this is before and this is after uh, end of his lengthening procedure. And this is another patient comparing to his brother. This is before the operation. You can see the level of his height, of his uh, head, sorry. And after the operation, you can see the difference. Uh, this is after getting my advanced diploma in Elizarov surgery in Kurgan in Siberia. I was really lucky to uh, get this diploma and I was lucky to uh, uh, being working in the United States with uh, prestigious uh, specialists as uh, Dr. John Herzenberg and Dr. Kevin Tetzworth and Dr. Drorpeli. Uh, and Dr. Uh, James Sebenisky in Ohio and Charles Taylor in Memphis. Uh, I work with all of them in the United States about uh, three years and learn uh, all the techniques for lengthening, not just Elizaro, but I do also, I use all the computer assisted device as Taylor Special Frame, uh, TL Hex, uh, eye fixation, smart correction, or so And I also do uh, 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 cosmetic lengthening using uh, internal fixation. This is uh, uh, a patient with bow leg. So you can see that we can correct the bow leg also uh, with the lengthening. So you can see his foot on the left side, his leg became straight and on the right side with bow leg. And this is another patient from uh, North Germany, who was, his height was 179 before the operation and length in six centimeter. And this is his photo after the operation comparing to myself. Uh, this is uh, the regenerate. You can see on the left side, the quality of the regenerate uh, during lengthening. This is six centimeter lengthening. And this is after removal of the frame. Uh, we don't like, we have to, we have to consider the proportion. Uh, the femur should be 1.2 uh, uh, proportion in comparing to the tibia. So when we lengthen the tibia, it sh we should not convert this proportion. The femur should continue to be longer than the tibia. So we don't like to do more than seven, eight centimeter maximum to the tibia, not to convert the proportion between the tibia and uh, the femur. And you can see here the quality of the newly formed bone. We don't remove the frame uh, uh, before the full consolidation of the bone. And we do anteroposterior and lateral view to be sure that the alignment is perfect before we remove the frame. If any malalignment happened during the lengthening, it is easy to correct and then achieve at the end final excellent outcome regarding the alignment. 
of the bone. So no deviation during lengthening. Uh, this is some of my patient with uh, different kind of frame. You can see a stainless steel frame, aluminium, titanium, and the carbon fiber frame. This is uh, after frame removal. The patient asks about how uh, the scar is looking like. So this is just two weeks after frame removal. You can see here that there are some scars in the tibia and proximally here near the knee and uh, uh, you can see the function of the knee and the function of the ankle you can the patient can do dorsiflexion of the ankle here and the plantar flexion so uh, we can be sure that uh, uh, the, the ankle function the knee function is perfect during and after the procedure and for the scar uh, the patient can use some uh, uh, special scar cream like uh, Mederma or scar zone to improve the appearance of this scar. In the worst condition, we can do scar removal surgery. It is minor surgery and we remove all the scars. This, is, this could be done six months to 12 months after frame removal if the patient do uh, uh, surgery with external fixation. And this is the entrance of the beam. This is after 10 months of the operation. You can see there is no inflammation, there is no infection. So the scar appearance is minimum. And we use a special uh, kind of goose and we compress this over the beam side to have no possibility for infection or less possibility for infection. This is uh, our published study about safe cosmetic uh, lengthening. And uh, we have to manage any minor complication if happened. We, we, we are very serious. The surgeon should be very serious to manage any minor complication before it becomes a uh, uh, real complication. And this table shows uh, uh, the minor uh, complication we uh, manage it like uh, cystic regenerate and we wait and see and then consolidated well uh, cyst formation we injected uh, synthetic graft and the final result was uh, good and hypotrophic regenerate we applied intramedullary nail after removal of the fixator and the final outcome was good and uh, uh, bilateral cyst uh, re, uh, in the regenerate, we applied synthetic graft injection. So uh, you can see that any minor complication we can deal with and we can overcome, we have at the end uh, good result. This is uh, uh, the cystic formation that we injected synthetic graft and this is after one year uh, you can see the graft is absorbed and uh, the alignment is well and there is no problem for the patient. Happen. And uh, this is uh, with lengthening over nail when we insert intramedullar nail and we apply external fixator to lengthen and then we lock the nail after lengthening. This shortens the period of lengthening to be just uh, 10 to 12 weeks maximum. And this is the alignment after intramedullary nail. Uh, recently, some of our previous patients wished to do lengthen the femoral bone as well using intramedullary nail. We have used successfully precise magnetic nail as well as phoenix nail. Uh, this is during insertion of intramedullary nail for lengthening the precise nail. And this is during using the remote control to uh, lengthen the patient. And this is during lengthening. And after consolidation, this is after five centimeter of lengthening both femoral bone. And this is a lateral view. You can see the regenerate area even bigger in size for the quality of the bone. So, uh, with intramedullary nails, there are different kinds uh, as ISKD nail, 
which is also fixed. This is recalled, but may be re-released in selected country. We don't use uh, ISKD nil due to high rate of complication with other doctors. Uh, Fedbon, uh, which is available now in the market, and uh, also fix company bought uh, uh, the Fedbon nail company. Uh, Albizia nail uh, is used only by uh, Dr. Guichet from France. He's operating in Milano and uh, in London. Uh, and the precise nail, uh, which is uh, withdrawn from the market and recently re-released again just this month. And this is another kind of uh, uh, nail with Bliskonov uh, uh, nail, but it is not available in the market. This is an ISKD nail which works mechanically by rotating uh, 3 to 9 degrees and Albizia nail uh, with Dr. Guichet that need to be rotated uh, the limb 15 to 20 degrees each time to lengthen. So it is we lengthen by mechanical movement of the leg. And uh, this is the Fedbon technology is uh, uh, electric impulse generated from a subcutaneous implanted antenna and this nail is motorized and the sensor we implant the sensor under the skin to go use the remote control over the sensor directly and this is a precise nail which is uh, considered I, I use precise nail since uh, about now seven years almost and uh, it is it work by uh, magnetic waves generated from the uh, uh, electric uh, remote control. This is the old version of the remote control of precise nail. So intramedullary lengthening has uh, is minimal invasive surgery approach. It eliminates the risk of pin site infection. It improves the patient comfort and satisfaction versus external fixation. Uh, the intramedullary, it has intramedullary stabilization. The surgical time may be reduced. The nail removal uh, is should after one to one and a half year. Uh, internal lengthening nail as compared to external, it has better cosmetically, less painful, uh, easier patient post-operative, associated with uh, lesser complication, associated with uh, better patient satisfaction, better regenerate for future lengthening if required, uh, associated with quicker return to social activities and quicker return to full weight uh, uh, bearing. However, uh, for, of course, it is uh, it costs much more than uh, using just external fixation. The external fixation operation cost may be 20 to 25 percent from the cost of doing uh, internal lengthening. Uh, this is um, a newspaper article about uh, the first uh, internal lengthening operation I did in uh, uh, Cyprus. It was the first operation to be done in Europe uh, for internal lengthening with uh, 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 intramedullary nail with remote controller, precise nail. This was in 2013, and uh, we do it successfully until the moment. So, uh, using a Lizarov device in the technique of maximum stability is safe for cosmetic lengthening. However, it should not be used except with a very well-trained surgeon who is familiar with technique and know well how to prevent or manage any possible complication if happened. It, allow early, it allows early walking and good rehabilitation and decrease the need for extensive physiotherapy, good post-operative care for being sight and uh, uh, diminish the scar to minimum. It is good pre-operative, uh, good pre-operative evaluation is mandatory to achieve good clinical and psychological final result. The future is the intramedullary nail thinning and we just started.